Hi, right, this is a chapter 5 video. Um, in the previous video you saw that we, rather than getting um, an input of type string from the user, we got an input of type hash set which contains a set of words from the user. What our plan is now is to get that set of words and map those words and strings um, across to a specific response and then respond accordingly. So just to set the scene a little bit, let's just have a look at our support system internal workings of the support system the class as to where we've got to so far. So nothing is new at the top in terms of the fields and in terms of the constructor, that's all exactly the same. Everything is the same in the public void starts and the first part here is all exactly the same. That bit, the while loop and everything is the same. The first new bit we get to is the new hash set which we've now created, which is a hash set of type string. So remember if we when we looked at the at the input reader class, we changed the input reader class so that the get input returned a type hash set. We now uh, have then changed this so it's a type hash set because if we'd have done string it wouldn't have compiled correctly because we're returning a different type now. What we do then is we have a look to see if this input string which we've created or this input uh, hash which we've created contains the word by in it. If it does then that's fine. Um, we can end the program. So nothing really has nothing really has changed. Our response again is quite similar. However, the difference is now that we've got responder dot generate response, and then we've got an input. So that what we're doing is we're taking the input from the user, and we're putting that into the generate response method in our um, responder class, which is what we didn't do before. So before we go into the responder class and see exactly what's going on there in terms of how that maps that particular word to a response, let's have a look at maps. So now we have a set of words, we need to map a word, um, word to a certain phrase or response. Um, and what we can do is we can use maps for this. So maps are a collection that contain pairs of values. So these maps contain a key and a value. So in the same, when we've looked at our phone numbers, we've got a key as the name and then a value as the number. Now we can map any types we want. So we could map a string to a string or a string to an integer or an integer to a string. It doesn't matter how we map it across, but all we're looking is just some kind of relationship between the key and the value. Again, this is what's normally used to demonstrate a, a map is the phone book analogy. So we've got a string Charles uh, Goyen would map to the string there, which is the telephone number. Now, in this case, we need the telephone number to be a string and not an integer because it contains spaces and parentheses. So that's our hash map there. We're mapping the string on the left to the string on the right. Um, so a name to a number. So here's just a quick overview of what we're going to do. When we declare, when we define and assign our hash map, because it's a parameterized class as before, we need to specify what types we're working with. Because we're now working with keys and values, we must specify those types. So in this case, when we're creating our phone book, we're creating a type string phone book, so where the string maps to a string. We could, again, uh, have different types there, but in this case, we're just mapping a string to a string. So I've created a, a little um, demo of, of how a mapping might work. So here we go here with our import statement at the top where we in, in imported our hash map. Um, we've, then we've then defined our hash map here. And, that def and, and to define that we need our two different types which is going to be a string key and a string value. In the constructor we then make our assignment statement to set up our object. And then we, if we go, and look, if you look in the hash map class on the API, you'll see that there's a method in there called put. What we're doing is we're using the phone book dot put. So we're uh, using that method, and you'll see that that uh, method takes two parameters, the key and the value. So we just set up the key. And the first one here is Charles, and then the value is his phone number. We then do that for the rest of the users, which are going to be in this particular phone book. The, uh, the method which we use, the only method in, in the class is the get number method where the user simply specifies the name and then it returns the number. Well it doesn't return the number in this case, it just prints the number out to the terminal. So let's just have a look at how that would work. 
So the, the constructor has already initialized all of the um, specific phone numbers in this one, so all we've got is this get number string. So if we put in Lisa, then that will system.out.print line Lisa's phone number. So that's that working away. Okay, so that's a quick demo of map. So now we need to move on to the problem at hand, which is using a map within the tech support. We therefore need to change this responder class. And what we're going to use is we're going to use a hash map field within the responder class, which has got a string key and a string value, which matches a word from the user uh, and to the value, which is going to be the response they give. We then need to pre-populate the hash map so that certain words, for example, crash, will have a certain value. For example, uh, your machine has crashed, unplug and restart or something. We then uh, we need to create a method which takes a hash set argument which we're going to provide from the user uh, and if there's no recognized word then we need to then still use our random response as we've used before because you know if, if we can't find a word which which we know then we're just going to give them some random response which should keep keep the uh, keep the user happy so in order to see that I'm going to go through a little demo now so let's just reset this virtual machine and have a look in our responder class so there's a number of import statements which have been included in the top. The fields we've got now, we've got a new field called response map. And our new field takes the two string types which we discussed previously. We're going to have a string key and a string value. The other uh, fields are very similar to the ones previously. Random generator is the same and default responses was previously responses. That's similar. In our constructor, we then uh, construct our hash map. We also construct our array, array list of the full responses. Our full, full response map is new, so we'll go and have a quick look at that method. So this is our responses where we create a value which the user is going to give us, for example, crash. Um, so we create that key and then we put that to a value. Uh, well, it never crashes on our system, etc., etc. So that's going to be a response which we're going to give to them if any time they say the word crash. Uh, that then goes through and populates a uh, number of key values. We've then got the fill default responses, which was previously fill responses, so that just um, fills our array list full of random um, responses, which we can pick randomly. And then we're going to use our random generator, which we've had before, where we can pick a random number. Now, one of the differences in this particular class is then the generate response. Now previously, if you remember, this took no parameters. So the generate response was uh, took no parameters and it just gave the random response. Now, however, we want to base our response on a parameter from the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the hash set or the, the string from the user, uh, which is effectively the sentence they've said. And we'll take that and that's what we're going to call as a words local variable. So within this for loop here, we're going to have a look at the hash set provided by the user and we're going to go through each word within that hash set. Our local variable response is then what we're going to come back with a response with. So what we're going to use is we're going to look in our response map, uh, which is our hash map. Uh, and if you look in the API, you'll see that we can use the get method. Uh, the get method, we then put the key um, into. So we're going to put each word which the user gives to us, we're going to specify that as a key. Now most of the time that key or that word will not be a key, so it will mean that the response may remain null because if that uh, response map.get word, that will return a null value if you check the API if, um, if the value cannot be matched by that key. If, however, the response is not equal to null, that means that a key has mapped to a value, then we will return that response at that point. So that's the point at which we found um, a word which matches a value, and then that will be. However, if that response is always equal to null, then we'll never get into that if statement. Well then, uh, if we get to here, you can read that text in your own time. Once we get to here, it means that there's no response being found in our key, in our hash map, in our key value mappings. So what we're going to do is pick our default response. This was shown in a previous video where we just use a random number generator to pick a random number from our default responses array list. So now we've got a, a program which pretty much uh, doesn't actually do much cleverness 
as opposed to, um, but it, it does maybe appear to the user that someone is actually talking to them in the responder. So this again, a bit of a dodgy little system uh, in terms of the real application of it, but it gives you some ideas. And um, we've looked at hash maps, keys, um, keys and their values um, in this video. So in order to, to get a further understanding of that, have a look at those additional exercises and there's an extension exercise as well. So have a look at that exercise um, and then we'll see you next time.